Hi, I'm Neil Thompson. I'm here with author John Green, who is visiting us here in Seattle to talk about his newest book, The Fault in Our Stars, which is fantastic. It was selected as one of Amazon's best books of the month for February, and we asked uh, a bunch of our Twitter followers and Facebook fans and, and uh, blog followers to send us a bunch of questions, which I'm going to fling at you in rapid fire succession. I will do my best. All right. Thanks for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. And congrats on the book, which is wonderful. Thank you. All right, I'm going to jump right in. Okay. What has been the most surprising thing about the nerd fighter community for you? So my brother and I make these YouTube videos, and our fans are called nerd fighters, the people who have the community that's built up around our videos. Um, the most surprising thing is how committed they are to decreasing the overall worldwide level of suck. Like we just had the project for Awesome this year at the end of 2011, and raised over $100,000 in 48 hours, and that stuff just blows me away. They are truly awesome. <laughs> Great. Um, next, from Liana, what's your view on the afterlife and why did you choose Amsterdam? Um, I set part of the book in Amsterdam partly because it's a lovely city and I got to live there for two months thanks to the Dutch Literature Foundation, but partly because it's also a drowning city um, and the novel is concerned with a young woman who has cancer in her lungs that causes her lungs to fill with fluid and um, she is in some way, she, she sees herself in Amsterdam in a way and so it was important for me to allow her to, uh, to be there. Um, so that was part of it, but also it's just a really nice city. Nice. Next, from Barbara Jean, how do you do it over and over again? Oh, that's nice of Barbara Jean to say. Uh, I don't feel like it's that simple. <laughs> I just try, I mean, you know, I spend a lot of time between books. It's been three and a half years since my last um, book that I wrote by myself, and uh, I spend that time working really hard to try to make something that'll mean, be meaningful to readers. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -mm, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Sure. From Faith, when you were younger, did you think you were going to be a best-selling author? <laughs> or did you just know it? <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> I mean, I still don't, I still don't think of it that way. Um, I have a job other than writing, and I love doing work other than writing, and I don't want to think of myself as just being a writer because that freaks me out. And, um, yeah, so I don't, no, of course not. When I, was a, when I was a kid, I loved books, I loved reading, I loved writing, but um, it seemed like being an astronaut to me or something. Uh, it just seemed like a completely unrealistic career goal. But what I've learned over, over the years, and, and you know this too, is that uh, there are lots of different ways to make a life um, that has words in it. Mm -hmm. Lots of different ways to make a life writing. Um, and so I feel very, very lucky to, to have found one, but it's not an unrealistic career goal. Lots of people do it. Yeah. So um, Faith wants to know, define love. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Faith. Jeez. Um, uh, 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 Faith has me. Faith has me. She plumbing. stumped you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, romantic love, I can sort of define. I guess I would define love the way that uh, Isaac defines it in The Fault in Our Stars. I would say that love is keeping the promise anyway. Nice. I like that. Moving on. Um, from Matthew Bailey, my question to John Green is, who the F is Hank? Oh, yeah, that's a joke in our community. Um, Hank is a mass of incandescent gas. <laughs> of course he is. Yes. And he plays guitar. Yes, and he also <laughs> plays guitar. Shannon Devlin asks, what is your most favorite book you've ever read? Ever read? Wow, that's impossible to pick. There's too, too many good ones, um, and I would feel like I were, was privileging one excellent book over another. Um, I reread The Great Gatsby every year, so maybe, maybe Gatsby, but there's, there's a lot of books I reread a lot. So Devin asks, if you could go back and talk to Little John and Little Hank, what would you say? Oh, that's a good question. I would tell them that it gets better. Um, it's really hard to be young in this world, and lots of people don't give, give you credit for that. They say, like, oh, this is so easy to be a kid. It's so easy to be young. It's really hard, and uh, sometimes you feel like your talents don't line up with what the world wants you to do, and... Um, I would go back and tell myself and my brother that um, it's going to get better. Um, adulthood turns out to be way cooler than you think it's going to be. <laughs> um, as you've proven by driving around the country in a van. Exactly right, which is a super mature thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Little John and Little Hank, where is that one? Why are your main characters all only children if you have such an awesome brother for inspiration? <laughs> Um, well, I, I don't really like writing about siblings um, because I like my brother and everything, but um, I guess I'm always imagining a world in which he, he was never born and I got to be, I got to get all the attention. <laughs> um, so maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I feel bad about it though. My brother's always 
always uh, making fun of me and begging me to write a sibling someday. <laughs> Make him really cool and handsome. <laughs> As he is in real life. Right, of course. Of course. Uh, all right, so Lauren M. Oh, by the way, that question was from Jill. Lauren M. wants to know, what kinds of things did you do to prepare for writing from a female perspective? Uh, I'm not like a method actor. Like, I didn't like, <laughs> wear a dress. You know, like, like try to get in touch with my inner female self or anything. Um, I, I think it would have been really intimidating if I'd been writing from a female perspective generally, but I was writing from Hazel's perspective specifically, and I felt very connected to Hazel, very empathetic toward her. And once, you know, it, it was many years before I felt comfortable writing in Hazel's voice, but once I did, um, that the book came pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Here, here's a tough one from Brian Sagara. Do you like Subway sandwiches? <laughs> I do. We've been eating quite a lot of truck stop food on our tour, and usually the healthiest option is Subway, so I'm all for Subway. Another food question from Anastasia. What is your favorite type of cheese? I like, like the fa I mean, I don't want to sound pretentious, but my wife is always bringing home fancy cheeses from when, you know, from, from grocery stores. I, I like the fancy cheeses. Nice, nice. Um, I guess it doesn't sound that pretentious if you can't even name one fancy <laughs> cheese. Whatever my wife brings home. <laughs> uh, Dear Dream wants to know, does this shirt make me look fat? No. Probably not, Absolutely right? not. Yeah, I didn't no. think so. Yeah. I like the stripes. Um, <laughs> and uh, there was another one, and we can probably wrap it up on this, even though I wish we could have more. Erica wants to know, I know you just published The Fault in Our Stars, but are you planning on any more books in the future? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And if so, what? Not yet, <laughs> um, but at some point <laughs> I'll start today. to think. Not today. Not today. I'm not going to write any today, but at some <laughs> point I'll start to think about um, my next book. I mean, I already have a lot of ideas. I just don't know which is going to win in the end. Um, so it'll probably be a few years, but um, I, I will be writing again for sure. Excellent. Let's, let's, let's do one more from Brianna G. What is your favorite thing about life? Oh, it is such a gift to be able to be an observer of the universe. Like consciousness itself is such an astonishing gift. The fact that we can use language to talk to each other, the fact that we can connect and collaborate, the fact that you can write something down and bring it and it can come to life in someone else's mind. Like that is, I can't get over what an amazing gift it all is. So that's my favorite thing about that's life. That's nice, I like that. Perfect. John, thanks a ton for being here. Thank really you. enjoyed talking with you. Best yeah. of luck with the book. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks for your questions. Yeah, thank you.